Good morning, afternoon or evening, my name is Lewis Lapton and welcome to another car tutorial. Today in our car tutorial series, what we're actually going to do is animate things with Car 2D. Now, as you can see on my desktop here, I actually have a player anim and each frame is at 256 by 256. Now I have an animation to go to the right, to the left and also idle animation. And it's super, super simple to do it with Car 2D. So without further ado, let us begin. So we head straight to our car tutorial series and we make a new folder called 043 underscore car 2d animation. And then we click and drag the folder onto our code studio icon. Okay. Then we go straight to our user settings and then make sure we're using our custom init.js and then F1 init. Fantastic. And then we knock back on the Git version of car. Now, before we actually command R and run, what we will do is go into our assets folder and click and drag in the player animation. Okay. And then before that, we now go into our car file.js and we add in our library. Now, if you remember how to do this when we played with Zooey, it's exactly the same thing. So we do project.add library. And then within here, we just do car 2D. And there we go. We now have car 2D going in, but it won't really pick it up until we actually do a command R and run. So that's what we'll do right now. So command R and run. Okay. Fantastic. So right off the bat, what we need to do is actually make a new class. And this one will be called char.hx. Then we'll do a package and then we'll do a class graphics and call the class char. Now we need to actually put in a few things and really this way that we're gonna make the animation is a bit of a cheat because I wouldn't actually implore that you use the key functions and keyboard functions within a player class. I would always say to use it outside, but to get this running, we're just gonna do that anyway, just so we can see it going ahead. So all that we need to do is actually import a few things, both with car and with car 2D. And those are import car dot key and import car dot inputs dot keyboard. And then with car 2D, we do import car 2D dot animation and import car 2D dot sprite. Now, these two things, such as the animation and sprite, should really make a bit of sense actually when you look at them. The animation would be for the animation and the sprite for the sprite itself. But really we can't get to use the sprite much if we can't really access it and one way we do it is that we extend the char to actually use sprite and one way to do that is extends sprite and there we go now we've actually accessed it and now we can actually use it within our project so now what we will do is actually set up a few public vars for our animations so we'll do a public var left walk with animation and a public var right walk, also with animation. And a public var idle, also with animation. And that's really it for our animation. And this is what we're setting it to. We can do things for shooting or for dying and things like this, but we'll just keep it to the left, right, and idle, since those are the frames we actually have. Now we'll just do some bools, and that will be public var left with bool, and a public var right also with bool. And there we go. We've now set up our bools. So we do left and right with our keys and we've done our animation. Now in our new, it's a little bit different to how we've normally done it before because now we actually need to, to use something called super. And super has this way of overriding some things and sort of changing the aspects of your class really. I mean, I know that a few other hacks frameworks use this as well. But this is really the first time I came into contact with it, especially in car. So with the animation, this is what it uses really. So you're going to have to get used to that one way or the other. So we do super and within the super, what we actually need to do is bring in our player animation image. So what we need to do is assets dot images dot player anim. And then what we need to do is actually do the width and the height of each frame, not the actual sheet itself. So it's 256 by 256. And there we go. Now we can actually start setting up our animations and, and creating ranges for them and to see where the first and last frame of each animation is for as well. So we'll do left walk 
equals animation dot create range. And within these arguments, we actually have min index, max index, and speed, which is really quite simple because all that we need to do is do the minimum index, which would be say zero is going to be the top left really. So it goes from the left to the right and it reads like a book really. So it's, it would be, it would actually go from zero to seven for the first couple of frames, which will be eight frames and then eight to 15 for the second lot. And that's how we have to do it. So we'll do the left walk first, which was actually our second row. So that would actually be from eight to 15. So we'll do eight to 15 and then the speed we'll just do four. Now the speed is a bit weird. Instead of actually going higher in the number and it getting quicker, it's actually going higher and going slower because there's a bigger gap really between each frame. So when you go shorter, say like one, it will go very, very fast. And then at 10, it will go a hell of a lot slower. So we'll do our right walk equals animation dot create range. And this one will be zero, seven, and four. And then we'll do our idle equals animation dot create range. And this one is actually 16 to 19. And we'll do the speed at eight instead. So then it's a lot slower. The idle will be sort of just bobbing in place and that's it. So now we need to set our animation for when it actually begins with our char. So we'll do a set animation and then we'll choose idle. So as soon as it starts, idle will be played. And that's all we really, really need. Now we'll set up our keyboard right now and we need to do the functions in just a second. So we'll do keyboard dot get dot notify and then on key down and then on key up, which we will create in just a second. But we'll just sort out the update and also the render as well, which we actually don't need with animation, surprisingly, we don't actually need render, which is very, very strange. So we can actually get rid of that and instead replace it with function on key down and function on key up. Now we'll just do these right now. So key for key and the char with string and then key with key and then char with string. Okay, but with our update, we also need to change that as well. And what we need to do, instead of it being a public function update, we actually need to do a override public function. It's a little bit strange. I couldn't really explain it right now, but it, it's this is the way that it has to be. It has to be overridden. But in our update, what we need to do is do super dot update. We need to make sure we are updating super. And this has been sort of a bit like what's happened in other hacks frameworks as well. You update the super, you use super and things like this. So it's a little bit strange that this comes into car. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually do some if statements for when we use the on key down and on key up, which we will set as well. So we'll do if left and then we'll do set animation for left walk. And then we'll do else if right, then set animation for right walk. And then if we're not actually pressing anything, we'll do else then set animation to idle. Because if we don't actually have anything pressed down, we will actually see either one playing or the other. There won't be just an idle just set. So once we press something, it will stay at that really. And we don't really exactly want that. We want it to change just to the idle since we're not pressing anything. So then on our on key down, we'll do our switch key. Then we'll do our case left, which will be left is true. And then we'll do our case right, which right is true. Now to save a bit of time, what I'm just going to do is copy the switch, just put it down here, change this to false, change this to false, 
I implore you to actually code these out as well because it's a lot better to code them out and make sure that you're actually doing it properly, especially if you're just starting out. This is just for the video necessarily to not waste as much time. Okay, so now we're actually done with the char. We don't actually need this open anymore, so we can actually go straight to our project. Now, in our project, we do actually still need to import a few things, and, you know, it's necessarily just the scene for car 2D and also the char. Again, we don't need to import the char because it's in the same hierarchy, but I do it just for safety more than anything because then I know it's there. So, we'll just import car 2 d dot scene and then import char okay fantastic so then in our project what we need to actually do is public var char for char and there we go now in our new function we'll just set up our char equals new char and then we'll do the x and y as well so we'll do char dot x equals say 350 and then char.y equals a 250. So it's going to be around in the center, really. Now, this is where scene now comes into, because scene will affect all of the animations. We need it, necessarily, because we need to add in things, and we need to make sure we can remove things as well. This is what scene can do, because it, it uses the scene, necessarily. So what we do is that we'll do scene.the, which is the only option, dot... And now we have a load of selections here, and the one that we actually need is add hero. And then within the brackets we have an argument, and this is for car2d sprite, and that sprite is actually our char. And that would have added in our sprite. Now in our update, we do scene.the.update. And there's nothing in the brackets, we don't need anything. And then within our graphics, which we've already set up before, we do scene.the.render. And then within the brackets, we do graphics. And there we go. We have now actually set up everything. So now when we press our keyboard or our keys, we will actually see our animations go through their processes and actually show things animating. So when we do a command R and run, there we go. Now you can see that it's on idle. And then when I press, say, the left key, there we go, it's going to the left. It does snap back to the idle animation for the right, but this is, these are extra settings that we can do. But again, this is just to get used to it. Then we do right. Fantastic. There we go. And there we go. And then we can mix this up with, you know, our keyboards that we have learned before with moving things on screen to just loads of other things, and actually have animating within our games, which is something really, really awesome, and it brings pretty much life into our games. So, there you go. What we have done today is that we have created a new project and actually brought in Car2D, which will animate our scenes. We've made a new class called Char and sort of cheated a little bit and put the keyboard within the Char. I wouldn't actually recommend this. I would do it outside, but because it made it a little bit easier, and just to get used to it, you know, this is the way we're, we just wanted to do, just to get started. And then what we've done is that we've gone into our project and made sure we've got our scenes, adding in our hero, which is the char, and then making sure it renders. And then we've run it, and it works when we've used our keyboard to go left and right, and also stay on the idle. So, there you go. My name is Lewis Lepton, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Bye-bye.